Hello, mathematicians. I am summoning math workers to math class. Okay, if you are in room, please come to math class. If you are in room, please come to math class. If you are in room, Please come to math class. If you are in room, please come to math class. If you are in room, please come to math class. Welcome mathematicians. Okay, uh, we've got pages to explain and a book to read today. I don't think I've read this one. I'm going to start with this one. It's a number book called Odds and Evens and it uses phrases that people often <clears throat> um, say out loud, uh, it's called an idiom. It's words that mean something in one way, but then when you combine them, they have a new meaning. Odds and Evens by Heidi Gonell. Gonell? Gonell, I think. <clears throat> it looks at idioms in a way <clears throat> of using num new number words. First one's called a one-horse town. Right here, this number one is highlighted with all the numbers that will be referenced. A one-horse town is, an, is a phrase meaning a small place. There's only one horse in this town, a one-horse town. It's like here, here's a city, which is big, but one horse, a one-horse town would be a small place. Two in the bush is part of a phrase, <clears throat> a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So if you have something in your hand, it's better than having something um, that you think about that is someplace else, two in the bush, that's elsewhere. Two in the bush. Three, three blind mice. Remember this part of our story? Yes, remember, seven blind mice? We know the song, three blind mice. Mm -hmm. And here's, the mice aren't really blind, but they have blind folds on. In the book yesterday, those mice really Mice really didn't have sight. They were blind. A four-leaf clover. You've heard of that, right? Clovers are very often three-leafed, so if you find a four-leaf one, that's considered good luck by some people thinking. And here's three clovers floating around behind the pig and right in front of it is a four-leaf clover. The five senses. So some of these are facts like that, for the clover or five senses. The other ones are things like an idiom, a one horse town. So five senses, five senses. Six of one and half dozen of the other. That's another idiom. It's a phrase meaning it's uh, kind of the same thing. Six means six, half a dozen. A dozen means 12, so division makes it half. Half of 12 is 6. 6 of one, half a dozen of the other. It means it kind of all works out to be the same thing. 6 or 6. 6 of one kind, half a dozen of that kind. They, they both mean 6. So it means kind of equal. <clears throat> Seventh heaven is a way of describing something that's really super special. Ah, I'm in seventh heaven which means I'm really liking what I'm doing, or thinking, or seeing, or a, a place I'm in, or food I'm, I'm having. I'm in seventh heaven because I have my family with me. I'm in seventh heaven because I'm going on vacation. Seventh heaven. Behind the eight ball. Behind the eight ball is another phrase. Eight ball in billiards or pool is the black ball has special um, meaning and symbolism and weight in the game. So to say I'm behind the eight ball means I could be in a problem situation. Behind the eight ball. Oh, here's one. You heard this? A cat has nine lives. It doesn't mean it really lives nine times. It just means cats are always so agile that even if they fall from a, from a high place if they're in a tree or something, they're usually okay. When they land, if 
very often because they're so agile and flexible. So you say a cat has nine lives. It means that it always kind of wins and survives. Ten gallon hat is a description for those tall cowboy hats that you can find in stores or, or on people's heads in many places in the United States. A ten gallon hat. The eleventh hour, here's a witch, which is in midnight. Eleventh hour means very close to the end of something. Twelve hours is half day. So the eleventh hour is close to that half day, half day point, or twenty-four hours, the second twelve, eleven, that's eleven in the morning and eleven at night. The eleventh hour means close to the end. The clock strikes twelve. You know, in the Cinderella story, it means things are going to change for her. So the phrase, the clock strikes twelve, means things are kind of over, pretty much over. And a baker's dozen. Twelve, it means a dozen. But very often, if you go to a bakery and you buy twelve something, the baker gives you one more as a courtesy and a thank you for buying so much. Twelve is a lot. So there, if you get twelve bagels, the seller might say, oh, let's make it a baker's dozen, and they give you one more for free. So different ways of having numerals in our lives, odds and evens. Okay, let's get on to work.